But we're sitting in a 2019 Ram 1500 with the e-torque system. That's right. It's a mild hybrid. That's right, and it's probably the second hybrid experience that the American consumer has experienced in the form of a pickup truck. The first one was, of course, the General Motors pickup trucks that came out several years ago that were also available in products such as the Chevy Tahoe and the Cadillac Escalade. Right. And that was kind of a slightly heavier duty hybrid system. However, now Ram is making available in far greater quantities their e-torque system in essentially all of their best-selling product. And we should mention that the Ram full-size pickup truck sold 500,000 units in 2017 in the United States alone. So that is a very high volume product. And they're starting with a 3.6 liter V6 e-torque. And Ram guys tell me that they're anticipating when the production is fully ramped up, about quarter or 25% of their Ram light duty sales to be the V6, which means, you know, you just mentioned 500,000. That's at least, you know, 80 to 100,000 units uh, a yeah, year. more than a hundred thousand a year. Yeah, of course. And then, of course, for the V8, the option is an extra one thousand four hundred and fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine that you're going to have a significant double-digit percentage people vying for that option because this is going to yield two miles per gallon better fuel economy. So now we're talking about seventeen miles per gallon in the city compared to fifteen. And on a percentage basis, that's relatively significant. That's a, you know, that's a double digit improvement in fuel economy. And if you think about all the mileage, you know, you can rack up and the volume of trucks, that's a huge number. That's right. But there's something missing, right? We want to focus this show on the fact that half ton, mid-size, heavy duty trucks, the way we know them, there's currently not a plug-in hybrid or an electric coming anytime soon no because you know before the end of 2022 we were going to have over 200 cars like regular passenger cars and suvs that are pure electric vehicles we have also seen from the very largest class a trucks these are the you know 80,000 pound 36,000 kilo type contraptions uh, being shown by mercedes both the arcos in europe as well as the um, Freightliner for North America. Uh, we've also seen Tesla show a, a concept uh, version of their truck. And we have numerous other players from Scania and so forth that are going to be coming out with products in the very heaviest trucks. We've also seen Mercedes come out with uh, slightly lower duty mm -hmm. uh, large trucks such as the uh, Fuso, mm -hmm. which is I believe is a class six. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the uh, Change, which is a Chinese company that operates mostly out of Los Angeles that is working with a Rider for an all electric large panel van. Basically think of it as a Mercedes Sprinter, like the largest version of a Mercedes Sprinter. Mm -hmm. Then of course Mercedes itself has shown its all electric Sprinter that's coming out next year, 2019, yeah. as well as the V class, which is uh, the United States is called the Metris. They're already selling it in Europe for 40,000 euros, including uh, VAT, uh, value added tax. That's right, it's all on yeah. sale right now. You can order it right now. So we have a lot of larger trucks in a variety of formats, but what we have not seen is a traditional American pickup truck, be it a full size one, like this very Ram 1500 that we're sitting in right now, or in the mid-size segment, like a Toyota Tacoma or equivalent. Mm -hmm. That has mysteriously not happened. We we're seeing hardly any, I mean, we're talking uh, vaguest of concepts being shown from small and oddball manufacturers that haven't really made any uh, volume yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But from the major automakers, we haven't seen any. Now, Tesla has talked about coming out with a pickup truck. Right. They've said that after the Model Y, there's going to be a pickup truck at some point. And they're basically saying that this thing will have a very amazing spec, it's an enormous amount of torque. I'm sure it'll accelerate zero to 60 very, very fast and have all sorts of other little neat capabilities. So I'm sure that certainly some point in 2019 by then, we will be seeing a concept of that. But the major players, be it Ram, be it Ford, be it GM, Nissan or Toyota, or Honda or in the future, say a Hyundai, None of them have shown a product like this. Yeah, that's really interesting. I mean, Ford did say that by 2020, they will have a some sort of electrified or hybrid 
That's right. F-150, but they didn't provide many or any specifications. That's right. So Ford will have what they are calling a hybrid Ford F-150 in calendar year 2020. But what type of hybrid are we really talking about? Is it a plug-in hybrid or is it a non-plug-in hybrid? Ford did give a little bit of a hint in talking about this product having all these power outputs for power tools so that if you are on a job site that you will be able to use this power in an efficient manner mm -hmm. and without having the engine sitting around there idling. And that would tend to imply a fairly large battery because if you're going to use these heavy duty power tools on a job site, it can't be one of those sub two kilowatt hour batteries because that is not going to last very long. Mm -hmm. So that indication would tend to imply that that might be a plug-in hybrid, but Ford simply has not said one way or the other that we know of. They've been very coy about this. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll find out soon, but that is certainly one important thing to watch. And I think this uh, question, why haven't we seen a pickup truck electric or plug-in hybrid, I think it has to do with culture, really, because if you look around this Ram right here, we're sitting in a 2019, it has a Hemi badge on the front, uh, on the hood, but it doesn't say hybrid or e-torque. It has no indication that it's been electrified. And I think maybe truck buyers, and maybe that's the question to the people out there. That's right. Um, maybe the market is not ready for an electrified pickup truck for whatever reason. Yeah, I mean, I think you're exactly right. It's a bit of a cultural thing is that when you're dealing with pickup trucks, it is, it is a very much a work tool. And even if it's not a work tool per se, it's a toy tool where you're towing, mm -hmm. you're towing a boat, you're towing a and horse you trailer. you free, right? You don't want to be uh, plugging in somewhere. Free is one thing. Right. The other thing is also perceived reliability. A new technology, even though in theory, there's nothing that says that a battery electric vehicle is not going to be reliable, one can certainly see that many would-be consumers might be a little bit suspicious about this and are not inclined to be the earliest of adopters. And maybe we saw that with the General Motors offering a hybrid pickup truck several years ago and they're still offering it today. And we don't hear much about sales volume. It's not that. advertised. Or, it's not yeah, advertised. Right. It's sold, I think, to fleets, to mm -hmm. you know, municipality so-and-so in California buys it because it's green and so forth. But the regular truck buyer, I think uh, these are kind of the last adopters around. That's really interesting. I mean, diesel is still a big technology, right? Ram is going to have We see more and more diesel. diesels. That right. GM is coming out with one at the end of calendar year 2018. Right. And of course, Ford just started deliveries of their F-150 diesel for the first time. We should mention, though, that uh, FCA, Fiat Chrysler yeah. Automobiles, that owns the Ram brand, does have a product closely related to this in the pipeline that they have announced, yeah. and that is the Jeep Wrangler. Right. The Jeep Wrangler uh, uh, will see a plug-in hybrid version of it in 2020. They've been very clear about this. And in April of 2019, they are also going to start production of the pickup truck version of the Jeep Wrang uh, Wrangler. Right. It has, doesn't have an official name yet. Some people think it's going to be called the Scrambler. Right. Whatever name it will have it is essentially a Jeep Wrangler with a bed in the back. Mm -hmm. So if the Wrangler gets a plug-in hybrid, um, I think we should not be surprised at all to see maybe a year or certainly within two years a plug-in hybrid version of that pickup truck version of the Jeep Wrangler and if that's the case what is the step from there to take it into a larger Ram truck be it the Ram 1500 or maybe a smaller Ram truck that will not be branded Jeep but maybe will look a lot like that Jeep Scrambler mm -hmm. or whatever it will be called under the skin yeah and uh, that's really interesting or maybe even a heavy-duty truck like a three-quarter ton or a one ton where you know those are heavier trucks maybe they can carry more batteries right heavier batteries, maybe maybe those people might be more uh, inviting to that technology, you know, electrified technology. I'm not quite sure. I think you Ford know. is on to something is that it can't be, I think, only about fuel economy in terms of the way that you sell it to the customer, not in the United States right now. But if you can say that this brings additional capabilities to the table, such as what Ford is talking about right. with power tools and the like. Running think, your campsite or whatever. That's right. I think right. If, if, they, if you market it that way, I think it may be uh, the key to unlocking the sales of such a product in today's U.S. market. Let's mention a few sort of smaller number of manufacturers really fast before we close. That's right. So Bollinger showed a B1 concept which is kind of a sport utility truck 
They said it's just basically an SUV, similar to a Wrangler, but it's, it's so yeah, Land Rover looks very much like a Land Rover Defender right. for, of, of your right? right, really square and boxy, and yeah. very much uh, in the line of a, of a Jeep Wrangler. So that's a pure Bev uh, battery electric vehicle. So certainly, but they're not. I mean, that product they're not has yet building it. Right. They're not building it yet. I mean, we're all very hopeful because we all kind of saw this product and we all sort of fell in love with it to one degree or another. So we would all like to see it. But until that thing is actually in production and the company's on the solid financial long-term footing, well, maybe we shouldn't, uh, you know, view that as a, a, a serious competitor quite yet. But we certainly all would love for it to become one. Yeah, and also there's a company, Workhorse. You know, they're selling a um, range extended electric truck. It's it looks like a pickup. Yeah, it is a pickup truck. It's now in the half ton segment. It's going to fleets, and they're saying it's going to go to customers or retail sales. Um, I don't know how much volume they're doing right now, probably very small numbers. Um, and there's also other companies like Atlas, A-T-L-I-S, which have concepts for pickup trucks, electric trucks, and wild claims once again. I mean, really, uh, numbers like, you know, 400 miles of range, quick 30-minute recharge times, towing like 10 or 12,000 pounds, right? But it takes a long time to go from concept to reality. That's right. And if you look at the pedigree of all of these companies that have trucks in the market today, General Motors had the Volt and now the Bolt, so they have a lot of experience. Um, FCA, not so much in comparison to have the Pacifica Hybrid. Mm -hmm. uh, Toyota, of course, is the king of hybrids, right. and they haven't put one out. Nissan is the, you know, arguably king, king of, electrics. of electrics with the Leaf, right? right. The best selling electric car in the world over the last handful of years. So. There are a lot of players that are ready to put their foot into this whole thing that certainly have the experience of doing an all-electric something, but maybe they rightfully consider this market to be the last because of the inherent conservative nature of the typical North American pickup truck buyer. That's a very good point. Well, let us know, guys, what you think about this question. Or should, should more manufacturers build and sell uh, electric trucks or plug-in trucks? Let us know. And Anton, thank you very much As always, for joining you, Andre. Uh, joining us. And where can they find you? Uh, primarily on SeekingAlpha.com is where I publish most of my stuff. Okay, thanks a lot.